Hey coaches, Coach Simpson, appreciate you tuning in my YouTube channel. I try to have something on here each week that maybe can help you throughout the season. Uh, just like everybody else, the season is a little bit busy for me, as I'm sure it is for you. So I'll keep these relatively brief, but maybe have enough depth uh, that they can help you a little bit. So as I'm going through these, uh, feel free to search this channel. If it's your first time on here, I appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. Hoping to continue to grow this put out content that can maybe help others in the coaching world. If you would like more in-depth materials, I have those over at my website, fbcoachsimpson.com, specifically what I'm going to talk about today, which is If Then Football. I have a lot of materials on the website that <clears throat> go in-depth on how I do this on offense and defense. Today, I just want to kind of explain what I mean by If Then Football. So, if then is a new way I've kind of started looking at the game the last couple of years and, and really strongly the last year. And I'm really going to try to implement a lot of that this season. So basically the idea is to have all the possible um, issues that you may run into, have thought those through so that we know what our next step will be. Basically trying to prevent future problems by knowing what those are going to be and how we're going to handle those. And so this can work on the offensive side of the ball. This can work on the defensive side of the ball. This can pretty much just work in life or in, in any business. But football-wise, I want to talk a little bit about offensively mainly, um, using the if-then mindset as far as building your offense. Of course, you can just flip it over when you're talking about building your defense. So if-then is something we want to think about. We're talking about formations. So offensively, I know a lot of guys are big into multiple formations. It's something that we are trying to do a lot more this year to make our offense a little more multiple. If you decide to do formations, you need to have the if-thens kind of figured out in those. Uh, for instance, you know, if, let's say, we're going to be a 10 personnel team, we're going to be in a 2 by 2 look. It's probably the most basic setup you can have in football. Uh, so we're two receivers on each side, one running back, and then you're going to go through the potential problems and then solutions you hope to have built into your offense. So, for example, if you're going to go 10 personnel, you need to have an answer for you can't run the ball even if they have five in the box. How are you going to make that work? What are you going to do to get the box even better for yourself? Or what are you going to do to run the ball if your lineman still can't block those five? Okay. What about if the defense decides that they're going to play man zero and bring seven? And so now you really can't block them. You know, what are your solutions to that? What is your thought process behind that if the defense does blank, then our answer will be to go blank. And there's lots of different th ways you can handle that. Uh, this is not meant to be done in this video. Like I said, I've got materials that cover like what we do, what we think, and, and uh, some PowerPoints and some other formats on my website. Yeah, I would suggest Man Zero, you better have an answer for. Because if you don't, you can expect to see that a lot more often. So the idea of if then is just we're building in answers to potential problems. If we're going to be an under center wing T team or under center option team and the defense decides to put nine guys in the box, then our answer will be whatever it's going to be. And there's lots of ways you can handle that. It doesn't mean you have to throw it. You can run, you know, a triple option. You could run um, overloads. You could do different things to kind of create matchups. But it's a problem you need to think through in your offense. Concepts or plays, a lot of guys will just call them plays, we call them, I call them a concept. So, you know, if we run, let's say that we're a big heavy buck sweep team, that's what we do. So we know uh, we're going to run buck sweep. And then if we have all these built-in answers if the defense does different things. So if the defense decides to play a nine technique over there that we're having a hard time blocking with our wing back, then we will go to whatever the solution might be. If the defense decides to go to an under front and our center is having a hard time with the one technique who's slanting, then we're going to do these two or three things that we've built into our offense that we know ahead of time. When we get to that problem, here's our solution. If the defense is uh, you know, playing a, a backside four and he's slanting into the guard's hips, then our answers will be X, Y, and Z. If the defense loads the box where they have great numbers, then we're going to do the following things to either lighten the box or use play action or use the RPO game. These are all answers to potential problems, but I arrived at all those answers 
thinking about football like this. If this problem presents itself, then this will be our solution. Unfortunately, a lot of times these solutions come out of a lot of misfires. You know, that's why a lot of the younger coaches I would recommend, whether it's my system or someone else's system, that you do go learn from an experienced coach who's made a lot of these mistakes and who's maybe learned the hard way, so potentially you can avoid that. Now, what I mean by that is the first time you're calling plays, uh, first time you're designing an offense, you're not going to think through all these potential problems. So that's why it's great for coaches to connect with each other and go through those problems. Maybe buck sweep is not your flavor, but you want to run inside zone. I would recommend you find an inside zone guru and talk to him in this terminology. Hey, I really want to run inside zone. Here's potential problems we might see. What do you see? And then, then what are your solutions to problem A, B, and C? You know, that's how you design an offense. If it's an air raid, wing tee, flex bone, whatever, you design it based off of this question. Here's what we want to do. And then if the defense takes this away, then we go to this, which I think is a very, very wing tee mindset, which is why I've been drawn to that. But there are a lot of offenses that use that element, but they're spread or there's something else. But anyway, that's, that's a way to think about offensive plays and the way they ought to go together. All right, then finally, personnel. You're gonna get into a game, let's say that uh, you're, you're gonna run spread personnel and they're gonna put their best guy on your best guy. Then how are you going to create space for him? How are you gonna create a better matchup potentially for him? How are you gonna move that guy around to get the matchup you want? That's what I think great offensive coordinators do. If you go back and watch most recent national championship, you know, Alabama moved Devontae Smith around the field quite a bit to create the matchup they wanted, and the result spoke for itself. You know, they were able to move him to slot, move him in motion, uh, kind of did him all, all kinds of crazy things to get the matchup they wanted. That's one way to look at it with personnel is if I want to create a matchup, then I need to do these things with my player. You also need to think about it as what tools are you giving your player when they face a defender who may be more talented than maybe you've got an offensive lineman who's facing a defensive lineman who's either quicker or he's stronger or potentially both. What solutions are you building in your offensive system to help him? So we're playing, let's say we're trying to down block a nine technique, we'll go back to buck sweep and we can't get him blocked with our wing. It's not going to happen. So you have options as a coach, then you can say, well, we can't run that play because that guy can't do that. You can bang your head against the wall and scream and holler at the kid, but physically it's impossible for him to do that. Or you can build in tools. If he can't block a nine technique, then here are some options we're gonna give. We may give help with our tight end. We might bypass him and kick him and run underneath him. We might condense our split. We might teach some influence blocking. We're trying to use some influence techniques to get the guy to do X to accomplish our job. But the idea is looking at your personnel and figuring out potential issues you may have and then the solutions. I know this may have been a little bit scattered on a video, but to me, as you guys are developing a game plan, these are the questions you need to ask as you walk into that game plan. If the defense does this, then our solution, which hopefully you already have built in, will be this. If you don't think about these questions, you're going to think about them on Friday night or Saturday or whenever you play. Unfortunately, it's going to be with 40 seconds to call a play as opposed to plenty of time to design ideas of what you're going to do. So hopefully, using the if-then mindset will help you offensively. I think it can really can help you as far as defensively. As a head coach, you know, a lot of times thinking through the scenarios of uh, if we're having issues here with our coaching staff, then these are some potential things we could do to fix that. Great mindset to use has really, really helped me. Again, if you want more specific information on how, exactly how I use it with my offense or my defense, go to fbcoachsimpton.com. Plenty of materials there for you. Or just comment in this video. I'll try to get to it. Or you can email me, fbcoachsimpton at gmail.com. Appreciate your time.